Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. As you can imagine, I am always scouring the internet for NMN, NAD, resveratrol, longevity, David Sinclair type content. So imagine my delight when I came across a Thomas Delau video where he was going to share with us his NMN results. Um, I eagerly clicked on the video and started to watch it. Unfortunately, it was not the kind of content that I was expecting. Now, nothing was wrong, but there was certainly something in my eyes that wasn't quite right. So enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the video and let's have a look at my review of Thomas DeLauer's My NMN Results video. The following video is my experience taking something. Okay, there are some things that don't have claims that are just my own experience, but I want to make sure that I express that straightforward, that this is my experience and my review of taking NMN. And if you look online, there are a lot of videos of people trying... Interesting. He, he never normally starts his videos like this, where he's very clear that it's just about what he does or... Um, specifically mentioning that that's that's interesting i'm wondering why he's doing that trying to figure out whether they should take something called nmn or nr and these are very very hot supplements right now and there's good reason behind it but me being a keto and fasting guy i have a very vested interest in what is called nad production and just how that works within the body i'm going to make this very simple i want to make it my explanation of why I started taking NMN and what I've experienced and what exactly I'm going after. So that's interesting. He's going to talk about why he started taking NMN, what the effects are and what he's actually looking to cover. So I'm hoping that he does actually do that in the video, explains why he took it, what it's done to him and what the results are. Let's see what, uh, let's see how this pans out. So a quick kind of synopsis, okay, within our bodies, we have this thing called NAD, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. And NAD is sort of like uh, the, almost the precursor to energy. Without NAD, uh, we wouldn't survive. It's very important. So over the years, what we found is that this NAD that is supposedly like a precursor to energy or an energy carrier, well, it also has very important jobs that have to do with longevity. NAD activates specific genes that allow us to repair and ultimately allow us to, well, have longevity. And what we So again, that's good. Good introduction to NAD and some of the things that NAD do. So that's good. Let's hope he gets on to his results pretty soon. What we've realized is that this NAD activates a thing called a sirtuin. And a sirtuin is just that, it's those longevity genes. Well, there were some studies where they looked at mice and they found that if mice did not have sirtuins, they didn't really get any longevity benefits from caloric restriction or keto or anything like that. So it kind of brought this whole thing to mind, like, wait a minute, NAD might be like the key to longevity, like it could be. So they started looking at it more. And the downside is, is as we age, NAD declines. It's kind of a known thing. When we start looking at the research, it's pretty interesting. So my initial goal when I started taking NMN was to try to improve energy. I knew that NAD played a role with energy and that was my goal. So let me explain something. As someone that does a lot of keto and fasting, I'm very into... So that's interesting. He said, when I started taking NMN, he still hasn't told us when he started. So did he start a few days ago? Has he been doing this for a number of months or years? Um, it's interesting. We'll keep watching to see if he actually does explain this. Because you remember in the thumbnail, it's very clear, my NMN results. So I'm guessing he's taken it for at least a month, hopefully two or three, maybe six months or a year. We'll, um, we'll wait and see what he's got to say. To cellular energy. I'm very into uh, what is called mitochondrial biogenesis. I talk about it all the time. And what that means is the mitochondria is the powerhouse inside of our cell. Okay, it processes and creates energy. If we have more mitochondria, we get more energy. And the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting have been demonstrated to produce more mitochondria, more mitochondrial biogenesis. Uh, they do this via activating sirtuins and i'm like well wait a minute if there are supplements that can activate sirtuins 
then maybe I can achieve more energy. That was sort of my short-term goal. But upon my research and upon taking it, I realized that, well, it's more of a long-term goal, right? You're actually helping energy out over the long-term because you're increasing your ability to make energy at a cellular level, not just immediate energy like caffeine, right? Anyhow, it explains like, as we age, maybe this is what's happening. Maybe this is why we slow down, hypothetically, right? I mean, if you look at the... So that's good. Good information about mitochondria, good explanations, and that's exactly what you'd expect from the channel. That's one of the reasons I've been following this channel for at least four years. It was, it was Thomas DeLauer and Eric Berg that got me into intermittent fasting and um, the ketogenic or the low-carb diet. Uh, this is all good... Um, a good grounding for why he's taking NMN. He's just touched on as well that it's a long-term thing. So I'm guessing he's been taking it for a long time. Otherwise, he wouldn't be doing an update. Let's uh, let's continue watching. Research it actually makes sense because we do know that NAD declines as we age. So I'm thinking, okay, if I take a precursor to NAD, then maybe I can support these NAD levels and keep me feeling fresher for longer. If you think about it, NAD declines as we age. Okay, if NAD activates the longevity genes like CERT1, then as NAD declines, we're activating less longevity genes. Another thing to factor in is that cells mutate as we get older. Like we have a lot of mutation that occurs. As we get older, the likelihood of cells going through weird mutations is just much higher. It's a very natural thing. Well, one of the roles of NAD is to help kind of stop that a little bit. So as we get older and we have more mutations occurring, well, we're going to need more NAD to solve that problem, which leaves less NAD available to, guess what, activate those longevity sirtuins. So we're kind of running into a serious issue, and this could be potentially the hallmark of longevity, right? If you're watching my... So that's good. Uh, all good information about NAD, about gene mutation and the way that you need NAD, um, PARP1, things like that, for DNA repair. Um, this information is obviously available on lots of channels uh, on YouTube, but I do like the way that um, Thomas DeLauer explains that particular element. Um, I'm a proponent of his. I watch his, his videos all the time. He's very good, clear, easy to understand explanations. My channel, you probably have done keto or done intermittent fasting before. Okay, and there's a reason that keto and intermittent fasting play a role with longevity. Okay, I'll touch on this very quick. NAD, the same sort of energy kind of thing, right? NAD is required to bring carbohydrates into the mitochondria. So that means that some of the NAD that we have is taken for that. Well, that's kind of a bummer. But if we're doing keto or we're doing fasting, that NAD that would normally take the carbohydrates, that would normally move that, well, it's available now. And I want you to think of NAD as like a bored molecule. It's bored. It needs something to do. And if NAD isn't transporting glucose in and doing that, it needs something else to do. So it goes and active. So this is good. I suppose he's tying in NAD to fasting because this channel is really really known for fasting and also for um, intermittent fasting sorry and also um, the ketogenic diet so tying the two together um, you kind of see the reason that he's doing that so again um, what you'd expect from Thomas's um, channel. It's sirtuins right so by keto and fasting we are not taking up as much NAD for glucose metabolism so that leaves more available for the longevity gene so it always has to be doing something it's just getting reallocated to where it does its work so in my brain, I'm always about more, more, more. So I'm thinking, how can I get more of this? So this is good. Probably if I was writing the script for him or um, he writes his own scripts, I'm guessing he's got a team that does it. This would be also a good time to bring in that NAD um, is produced uh, quite a lot when you're fasting. Um, so possibly no need to take NAD until you've broken your fast. Although some say that you can supercharge your NAD by boosting it even more and taking it while you're fasting. Uh, and then on the other side, some people say, um, add it when our NAD levels naturally drop as part of our natural circadian rhythm. And that's where I started learning about NMN. And that's where I learned about Verso, who is the sponsor for this video and why I'm literally doing this video review of them because they are supporting this because I started taking them and I had good results. 
Anyway, I put a link down below, but I'll talk a little bit more about them in a minute because they're different from other NMNs. But we need to kind of continue on the explanation because I don't want this to be contrived. Like this is my own experience. Verso just so happens to be the one that worked for me. Okay. Okay. Now we're getting into it. So this is a bit of a stretch. So he learned about NMN um, and then he learned about Verso. I've got a feeling he knew about NMN, was thinking about doing an NMN NAD type video, but Verso approached him first and asked him to do a video or they would sponsor him doing a video and promote their channel, which is okay because that's the way that, that things are done. But remember, he's talking about taking NMN in the long term. So I'm guessing Verso approached him maybe a year ago, six months ago, and said, take this product, take it for a good four, five, six months, maybe a year, see if there are benefits, because Thomas has admitted that it needs to be taken over the long term before he actually starts to promote um, this particular brand. Um, now, I've done a video on Verso, uh, and I had to look really, really hard to find them. If you Google NMN suppliers, M NMN supplements, Verso is nowhere near the top of the list. You've got companies like ProHealth, do not age the organ alive by science uh, and i'm guessing if it was alive by science who had approached him with um monetary reward for doing a for doing a, a video um i'm guessing he probably would have been mentioning that company's name and not verso um the chance of this meeting of looking for nmn finding verso it seems a little bit tortured to me let me know what you think in the comments below do you think Bit of a chicken and egg. Do you think the NMN came before Verso or do you think he found Verso before he realized about NMN? Uh, I'd be interested to see your comments. If I had it my way, I would take NAD directly, but NAD isn't bioavailable. Like you can go to a med spa and you can get you know, an infusion, injection, whatever, but even then it's arguable whether it's really working. If you take a precursor like nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mononucleotide, then you run a better chance, at least with oral administration. So this is where it gets interesting because again, if you look on YouTube, type in NMN versus NR, there's tons of videos. Some so good that he's talking about NAD and how that NAD is not uh, available for oral supplementation because it's such an unstable uh, molecule um, and it has to be taken intravenously is is the way that people normally take it if they want to take nad as opposed to a precursor. With tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of views popular stuff so this comes into why did i choose nmn over nr and i've tried them both okay nr is still a precursor to nad just like nmn nr is more researched but i don't bank just on the fact that there's a bulk of research i wanted to look further so in this, he's talking about taking NR. There's more research on NR, but he's decided to opt for NMN. Now, I've, I've watched this channel for a long time. I'm guessing if he's taken NR before, he would have mentioned it on the channel a long time ago. Um, maybe an NR company didn't approach him and ask him to make the video. I don't know. Um, but no reasons why he, he stuck with NMN and not NR. I'd be interested to find that out too. NMN, in my opinion, and from what I saw, is a more stable molecule. And being more stable is important to me. It also requires one less step to turn into NAD. Most of the conflicting science about NMN was saying, hey, NMN isn't absorbable. And up until somewhat recently, that made sense. But now we've seen that there is a specific gene, SLC12A8, if you really care. Okay, and this SLC12A8 directly takes NMN from the gut into circulation. Now my problems are solved, okay? So if NR was absorbing better but required additional steps, then NMN seems very intriguing. I can potentially get a precursor to NAD and be able to have it absorb. That's okay, so that's a, that's a fair enough reason. That's a good enough explanation of why he's opted for NMN as opposed to NR. That's exactly what I wanted. So if you get down to the nitty gritty of it, research really supports both. Supports both the NR and the NMN. But there was an interesting study published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism that it found in obese people, there were less sirtuins, but also less what is called NRK1, which the job of NRK1 is to convert NR into NMN. 
So if you are potentially overweight or you know, trying to lose weight, whatever, well, that would mean that if you took in an NR supplement, you potentially are lacking the step that you need to be able to convert that into a usable form. That is a little bit sketchy. So I look at that and I say, okay, well, maybe NMN is a more direct route to go, even though NR is slightly more researched. This whole... That doesn't make sense. The, the NR study was specifically done on obese individuals. Thomas DeLauer is anything but obese. So he's saying that because of that, it's sketchy. Well, it's not sketchy at all. If NR and NMN are exactly the same, which is what he's saying, and the only difference is that one extra step that obese people will have an issue with, and I think the study also mentioned that people were late, either old or late middle age, which again, Thomas is not, these are two factors that will have absolutely no bearing on whether or not he should take NMN or NR. Looking at what he said so far, um, NR would actually be the supplement he should be taking. Skipping a step thing is really only a theory, but it's kind of connecting all the dots. But then one of the reasons why I chose to use Verso in this particular case is because I know a lot of Dr. David Sinclair's research surrounding NMN and res resveratrol, excuse me. And when you have those combination, it's pretty powerful. I want you to think of it like this. And this okay, that's a bit of a sketchy link mentioning Verso and David Sinclair in the same breath. The company that sells NMN doesn't really matter. NMN is NMN. You just need to make sure that it's got the right CAS code and you've got to make sure that it's been independently tested by a third party. All it's down to then really is the price. So if you can guarantee that the company you're buying from produces 99.5% pure, whether that's this company Verso or it's do not age.org or relied by science, it's all down to cost. Verso has got nothing to do with David Sinclair. This is how David Sinclair puts it. Let's put it like this. If NAD is the fuel in the car, then the sirtuins are driving and resveratrol is like the accelerator pedal. So think of it as the fuel in a car if the sirtuins are driving. Yeah. Um, and then the resveratrol that we worked on years ago um, works on the same enzymes, but it's the accelerator pedal. So it, it actually... The NAD is making it work, but resveratrol will come along and make it work even faster. So there's a study that was published in the journal PLOS1 that found that resveratrol enhanced the ability of the sirtuin to do its job. Okay, but then we run into another issue. Resveratrol is not the most bioavailable. So Verso uses a trans resveratrol, which is utilized a little bit better in the body. So in essence, you're getting this resveratrol that makes the sirtuins do their job better. It makes the longevity genes do their job better. Okay, potentially allowing more mitochondrial biogenesis and more potential energy over the long haul, right? And just, again, overall, just this longevity piece that we are looking at, it's super, super intriguing. There was a set. Okay, so good to mention that you do need to take trans resveratrol and not the other version, which is called cis because it's better. It's, it's a, a much more powerful molecule. Um, this would also be a good time to mention, and he didn't mention it, that you need to mix your cis, so your trans resveratrol into a fatty food. And David Sinclair has mentioned this on numerous interviews, um, and I've mentioned it numerous times on my channel, and other people that have similar channels to this have also mentioned it. Um, but he's promoted a company that sells a capsule that has resveratrol and NMN in it together. And if you think back to the beginning of the video, he just popped the two pills and took a drink of water. That's not allowing the, the resveratrol to be as powerful as it can be because it's not being mixed in with the food. I think it's also um, maybe a little bit naive or they really don't understand the science, this company Verso. Uh, Thomas obviously doesn't because he hasn't watched or listen to David Sinclair as much as he's probably saying he has, you don't need to take resveratrol and NMN together. You do need to take resveratrol with a fatty food, and then you can take NMN. The only way that the Verso capsules are going to be beneficial is if you break them open and you mix them into a fatty food, such as yogurt, which is what David Sinclair uses, and also other things such as olive oil, and I think vegans use avocados. I think that's that's very important. That's 
that's one of the key things that I think is wrong here. And if David, if um, Thomas has been taking NMN and resveratrol for a long period of time, because he mentions that at the beginning, this is something that's key. It's it's kind of a when people start to take it and they make comments on the videos I make. The, these are the things that they don't know. Uh, these are like the beginner's mistakes. And if Thomas has been taking this for a long time because he says it's in the long term, um, it's not coming across in that way. That was published in the Journal of Endocrinology, okay, and this took a look at Japanese men, and it was a three-year study, 2016 to 2019, and they found that NMN in human studies was considered safe, and it did make a change. Okay, so there are some human studies, even though a lot of the research out there on the internet says it's only been done in mice. Okay, so it's right, there was a, a Japanese study, but it was a safety trial, um, so he's right, it is easily tolerated by humans. However, he said, and it did, make it, it did make a change. Well, it didn't make a change because the study did not test efficacy whatsoever. So that's slightly misleading there. That being said, okay, I digress. The cool thing about Verso is they are also using cold storage, which is very, very, very important, okay? Because if you are not keeping NMN cold, it can convert to a different form, which is not preferential within the body. This is super important. And a lot of times you don't find that with NR, which is another thing that I found during my research. But also that one-to-one -one ratio of trans resveratrol to NMN is super important, not to mention the lab testing with every single batch. Okay, so Verso hands down is awesome for that. I so why is the one-to-one -one ratio super important? There's no medical reason, there's no clinical reason, there's no scientific reason that's been shown through trials, whether that be uh, with mice or humans, separate trials on NMN have been conducted and separate trials on resveratrol have been conducted on mice. Um, yes, David Sinclair takes one gram of each, but that's only because that's the equivalent dose that he saw having positive effects on his mice. Um, let's carry on. Did put a link down below. Yes, they did support this content, but there's only a handful of NMN brands out there. And I wanted to make sure when I did this video and talk about my experience with something, Okay, so there's only a handful of NMN brands out there. You must have um, massive hands because there are a massive amount of NMN brands out there. So either you've got big hands or your team are not doing the right amount of research. There are literally hundreds of companies selling NMN and unfortunately there are new companies hitting the market every day. Some of them are dropshippers from AliExpress, some of them are bona fide um, suppliers who do send off for third party testing um, but you can't be sure some of them are literally weeks or months old so that's slightly misleading that i am very honest and very pure and very very forthright with the fact that yes this has been sponsored but i also want to be able to get the information out there because it like it realistically is probably the hottest supplement that's out there right now and one of the most searched so it makes sense to talk about it and it's very relevant to this channel so as always please do make sure you check them out down below in the description and make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel i'll see you tomorrow so no results no data no anecdotal information just one comment where he said i had good results um but what were they we don't know was it increased energy? Was it better sleep? Was it better recovery from, from injury? Um, I look forward to a follow-up video where he does actually say or does give, give us the information that he mentioned on the thumbnail because um, I think the information was good, excellent information with regard to NAD, mitochondria, um, NAD levels, resveratrol, how they work together um, symbiotically. But I think this seem to be more pushing verso than actually um, the results he was supposed to have um, achieved by taking nmn as a daily supplement so i hope you found that interesting or informative hopefully both i found it very interesting first time i've done this kind of video uh, so it was an interesting project for me i'm going to be very interested to see what your comments are what your answers are to the few questions that i've got here now for those of you that watch thomas delauer as i have for the last four years in this video, he didn't seem to have the same confidence or enthusiasm in his delivery that he normally does. It seemed to be slightly rushed or he seemed to be hesitant. He didn't seem to be 100% sure of the content, which he always is when he talks about keto or intermittent fasting. Um, as I said before, there's nothing wrong with the video. All the content that he covered was, was on topic and on point. 
nothing was wrong but something didn't quite seem right compared to his other his other videos um, so a few questions uh, I think the answer to this is no but I'd be interested to see what you say do you think this video delivered on the thumbnail he has which is that he's going to share his NMN results as far as I could see all he said was I've taken NMN and the results are good but no no quantification or no quantifying exactly what good means um, do you think he took NR before he started to take NMN or do you think as part of the advertising process he explained what NR was because if you search for NMN you're going to find out about NR as well did he cover all of that data and then push quite rightly to the one side NR so he could focus on NMN and specifically Verso's NMN do you think he's regularly taken NMN and then Verso approached him or do you think Verso approached him and then he started to take NMN and made this video um, <clears throat> there's no way to know but I'd be interested to see um, if you if you want to guess how long he's been taking NMN for um, I think if he'd been taking NR before he probably would have made a video about it because uh, YouTube creators who post a video every day and there's a lot of research and a lot of uh, production that goes into that one of their biggest uh, cries is always it's difficult to find new and interesting content and if he'd started taking NR a month two months six months a year ago I think he would have made a video about it uh, I'd be interested to see what you think do you think he did this just for the money uh, and I'm not saying that's wrong because Thomas makes his living off YouTube which is um, which is which is acceptable he has a very young family and it's the way that he puts um, food on the table um, but I'd, I'd be interested to see is he doing this just for the money and do you believe he does actually take NMN and has taken it as he said for the long run um, do you think he will do a follow-up video or do you think now this video is posted he's moving on to the next one because as I said YouTubers who post every day need to find new and interesting content he'll be back on to the intermittent fasting and ketogenic train if you like